Welcome to this special Abide Passion Week meditation. I'm Pastor Brian Stivale. In this week before Easter, we'll be spending some time meditating on the events leading up to the resurrection of Jesus. By reading all of the Gospel narratives, we can get a pretty good idea of what many refer to as Passion Week looked like. Before we begin, take a deep breath. Hold it in for a moment, and then release it. Today will be a hard day. We call it Good Friday. But what happens in the life of Jesus today doesn't appear to be good at all. Arrested by the religious leaders, brought before the high priest, and Pilate and Herod, whipped, mocked, beaten. But then we read these words in Luke 23. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breasts. No, today's story won't be easy. But it is good. By His wounds, we are healed. By His sacrifice, we are redeemed. As we walk through this week with Jesus and the disciples, let the Spirit of God speak to your heart. There will be incredible sadness and incredible joy. There will be miracles and suffering. Sit in the tension of the week as you meditate on His Word. Lord, even if I hear the story a million times, it will never cease to hurt to know that you were so cruelly treated by those you love so much. And it will never cease to amaze me that you did it all willingly because of your great love for those you created, your image bearers. Help me today as I meditate on the words of the story of your crucifixion, to know that your blood washed away all my stains. I am forever grateful. Amen. Take deep breaths all through our time together today. Let the tension drain from your body as you sit with your Heavenly Father. Let the peace of Christ dwell in you fully as you abide with Him. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Jesus died for that very reason. Let him wash you whiter than snow. The centurion who had been part of Jesus' crucifixion saw all that happened and knew that Jesus was innocent. Matthew's Gospel said he proclaimed, Truly, this was the Son of God. Let this proclamation ring in your own heart. Let's hear verses 47 and 48 from Luke chapter 23 again. Now, 
When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breasts. It's been a long night after Jesus' arrest. You stayed in the garden for hours. Then you gathered all the energy you could to find where they have taken him. You found your way to the high priest's courtyard. You heard the crowd. You saw Peter's denial of Jesus. Peter denying Jesus. It is all just too much. You just want to block out everything that you saw. The mocking of the crowd, the cries for that insurrectionist Barabbas to be freed, and Jesus to be crucified. It's just too much. But you can't turn away. You watch as they force Jesus to carry his own cross. You rush to his aid, but are stopped by the guards. You beg for them to let you help him. Instead, they find a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compel him to carry the cross. And slowly, Jesus, Simon, the guards and the crowd inch up the hill to a dreaded patch of rocky ground called the Place of the Skull, Golgotha. They lay his tattered, torn, and bloody frame on the cross. You look away as they grip his hands and feet, driving stakes through his flesh. You hear his screams, screams of pain, but not regret. You remember his tears in the garden. The cup is not passing from him. His father's will is being done. It is sometime in the late afternoon. The sun has vanished. Only darkness remains. Darkness and silence. As long as there is breath within him, you can't bring yourself to leave. When suddenly you hear him moan, Jesus cries out, Eli! Eli! Lama Sabachthani! My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? Suddenly, the earth shakes. It knocks you to your knees. There are screams and cries in the darkness as the ground just trembles and trembles. Later, you will hear that at that very moment, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. You quickly turn your eyes back to Jesus just as you hear him call out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then he takes his last breath. Your heart seems to stop with his. An iron fist is squeezing it inside your chest. And then, nearby, you hear the centurion, the Roman officer who had participated in this evil deed. You hear him praising God. And then he says, Surely, Surely this was the Son of God. This was the Son of God. You are frozen as you look back at Jesus with awe in your eyes. That suddenly. He had warned all who would listen. Now, it is finished. He prayed for another way. Now, it is done. And you slowly embrace the weight of it, the purpose of it, his sacrifice, his willingness, his plan all along. To be the Lamb. The words from the prophet Isaiah fill your mind. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. 
yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. As the world rushes in on you once again, you notice a man approach the guards and ask for the body of Jesus. He identifies himself as Joseph from the town of Arimathea, a member of the Jewish High Council. You know him. He is a good and righteous man. He tells the guards he has come from meeting with Pilate and has been given permission to remove and bury the body of Jesus. You watch in agony as the guards lower Jesus' lifeless body. Joseph carefully wraps the body in soft, white linen. You are moved. You consider the weight he must have felt, being on the Jewish High Council. You had heard rumors that he had not consented to this action. You pray as you watch Joseph leave with the body of Jesus. You follow him down the path to the tomb. Joseph places the body of Jesus in the tomb and then rolls a great stone across the entrance and walks away. You notice Mary Magdalene and the other Mary are there, sitting opposite the tomb. It is almost the Sabbath. You can't linger here. You consider for a moment the gift that Joseph has made. He must be wealthy to afford such a tomb. You stay a little longer, but you must be home before night falls over the sealed tomb. You rack your brain for what Jesus said a few days earlier. Something about the third day. Is it even right to hope? Is it right to believe? Then you remember it clearly. Jesus asked his disciples who people say that he is. Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. You walk back home. It's been a long, emotional day. But for now, you leave Friday behind. A day of loss. But for all that you've seen and finally understood, it was a good Friday too. Perhaps you will go back by the tomb tomorrow, Saturday, to rest and pray. You pray softly as you leave, thanking God for Jesus, praising Him for the gift of His sacrifice and your salvation. And you wonder what Sunday will bring. Lord Jesus, thank you. Those words aren't even enough to convey what is in my heart. 
Where once my sins were as scarlet, now they are as white as snow. As far as the east is from the west, so far you have removed my sins from me because of Good Friday, because of the agony you went through. I know Sunday is coming, but the people who followed Jesus then didn't. And so many in the world today don't know that truth. Shine through me, Lord. Amen. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, you can stand before him justified, redeemed, free from the yoke of slavery. Praise be to God. Until next time, may you abide in Christ. <laughs>